Good afternoon viewers, welcome back to Easy Mathematics. Today is a wonderful day, yes of course, we thank God for today. Today, we want to look at bearing and vectors. Last week, we were able to complete or conclude a solution on form on BEC 2022. Today, as we said, we want to look at bearing and vectors. But the discussion today is only on bearing, only on bearing. Now, when we say bearing, what is bearing? Bearing gives directions in terms of angles. So when we say bearing, it gives what? Directions in terms of angles. So bearing gives you direction, as in either to the north, to the east, to the left, or to the right, or whatever it is. But it is in terms of angle. And we have only two kinds of angles, uh, bearings. We have the compass bearing, and we have the three-figure bearing. So these are the two kinds of bearing, the compass bearing and the three-figure bearing. Now with the compass bearing, it deals with the four cardinal points, which is the north, the south, the west, and the east. So with a compass bearing, you have this, which is the north, the south, the west, and this as your east. And to tell a direction using the compass, we can say north 60 degrees east, which simply means starting from the north towards the east, measure 60 degrees. So bearing actually gives directions in terms of angles. Then with the second one, the three-figure bearing, it is actually the type of bearing that is being read from the compass bearing, starting from the north pole. You start from the north pole to the other one, and it is in a clockwise rotation form. So starting from the north pole, north uh, pole, you have it this way in a clockwise rotation Form. And as the name goes, it is a three-figure bearing. So it ranges from zero, zero, zero degrees, because it is three-figure, so zero, zero, zero degrees to 360 degrees. And we say, or we call it as a bearing in terms of the three-figure bearing. The digits are three. So what shows that an angle is in a direction form that is, is a bearing, we actually use it or we write it in three figures. So let's look at how to calculate the bearing of a point. So we have here, state the bearing of the follow of the point P in each of the following. What are we to do? We are to state the bearing. And remember that bearing gives directions in terms of angle. So we have to state the bearing of point P in each of the diagrams that has been drawn. So when you look at this diagram, you have the north, the south, the west, and the east. Now when I started and I mentioned, when I mentioned the three-figure bearing, I told you that it is being read from the north pole clockwise to the point. So starting from the north pole, this is where the point P is. So starting from the north pole clockwise to the point P is here. And what is the bearing? The angle given there is 48 degrees. So to calculate for the bearing of point P, we are going to say therefore, the bearing of P is 0, 048 degrees. Remember, we said three figure. So we just bring zero in front of the angle for it to be in a bearing form, giving you 0, 048 degrees, which is the same as 48 degrees. Now, when you come here to you have to find the bearing of point P. Where is point P? This is point P. 
we always start from the North Pole clockwise rotation. So starting from the North Pole, this is the North Pole, to point P, clockwise rotation gives up to this place. So therefore, the bearing of P is given by the angle formed here, including the angle formed here, and this angle. But we know that when it comes to the Cartesian plane or the cardinal point, the angle from here is 90 degrees. The angle from here is also 90 degrees. The angle from here also 90 degrees. Here 90 degrees. Which gives a total of 360. And this gives a total of 180. This gives a total of 270. And this gives a total of 360. When it comes to bearing, we have to also consider the angles formed on the cardinal point. Now, since we know from the explanation here that from here to here is 90 degrees, and this is also 90 degrees, to calculate the bearing of P, we are going to add in a clockwise rotation form the angle formed from the north pole to the point P. So 90 plus 90 gives us 180 plus 60 gives us 240. Now because 240 is already in three figures, there's no need for us to put zero in front of it. So we are going to say, therefore, the bearing of P is... 240 degrees and remember this is a three figure bearing because here we had 48 and it was only two we just brought zero in front of it for it to be a three figure bearing so that is how we calculate the bearing when it comes to a single point let's look at the last one it says read the point the bearing of point P Whenever you are to read a bearing from the cardinal point, we use the three-figure bearing. And with the three-figure bearing, we start from the north pole, count clockwise rotation. That is how the clock moves. So if I am here, starting from the north pole, move towards the point that has been given. So if I'm here starting from the north pole, and come to read up to this place because this is where the point ends. So ask yourself, what is the angle formed here and also the angle formed here? From the explanation given, we were told that each quadrant forms an angle of 90 degrees. So the angle here is 90 degrees. That is from the North Pole to the East Pole. From here to here is 90. The same thing from here to here is 90. But we have been given this portion to be 40. So how can I get the portion from here to here? I will get it by subtracting 40 degrees from 90, which is going to give me 50 degrees. So to calculate the bearing of point P, I'm going to add 90 plus 50. And 90 plus 50 is going to give me 140. Because this is already in three figure, I am not going to add a zero. So I'll say therefore, the bearing of P is 90 plus 50, 140 degrees. And that is how we calculate the bearing of a point, a given point. Now let's look at how to calculate the bearing of two points. And we call that one back bearing. When we say back bearing, it simply means 
returning from where you went at first. So let's say if I move from here, let's say 60 degrees north. So I'm, I'm moving 60 degrees north. But if I try to move back to where I came from, we say back bearing. So with the back bearing, there are certain things we have to note when it comes to back bearing. When you move from a point to another point with a given angle, let's say theta, if that given angle is greater than 180 degrees, we add 180 and the theta given. So we say, if in the question, we wrote that, if in the question, theta is less than 180, this gives us the angle given in the question, which is theta, plus 180 degrees. That is the back bearing. How to calculate for the back bearing? If the theta given in the question, and the theta refers to the angle, the angle given. If the angle given in the question is greater, sorry, is less than is less than 180, we add 180 to the theta. But if the theta given, which is the angle given in the question, is greater. Than 180, we are going to say subtract 180 from the theta, which is theta minus 180. So in the back bearing, where you move from a point to another point, then you decide to move back again. We say if the angle given in the question, let's say theta is less than 180. Add the theta in the question to 180, and whatever you are going to get becomes the bearing. But if the theta is greater than 180, subtract 180 from the theta. So now let's take the first question. The first question says that if the bearing of y from x, so that means we are coming from x to y. So if the bearing of y from x is 60 degrees or 0, 060 degrees, find the bearing of x from y. This one, we were from x going to y. So in other ways, I can say if this is my y, this is my x, the, the bearing of y from x, which means I am from this direction, coming to y. And they are saying that the bearing is 60 degrees. Now I have been asked to calculate the bearing of x if I am coming from y. So that is the back bearing. You move this way, now you are moving back. Now if I want to use the formula, look at the theta given, which is the angle. Is that theta less than 180 or it is greater than 180? 60 is less than 180, which means we are going to go for the first one. If theta is less than 180, we are going to add the theta to the 180. So because the angle given in the question is less than 180, we will say the theta plus 180. And the theta there is 60 degrees plus 180 degrees which is going to give us 240 degrees. So, the question is, find the bearing of x from y. So, we'll state our answer by saying, therefore, the bearing from, sorry, therefore, the bearing of x from y is, what did we get? 240 degrees. And this is how you calculate using the formula. That is if theta is equal to 180.
you add the theta and the 180 to get the bearing. So the bearing is this. But we can also use the diagram. That is the compass and the three-figure bearing to find for it. Now when you come back to the question, it says if the bearing of y from x, it means we are coming from x. So from x, let's say this is our x, we are going to draw a cardinal point there or a Cartesian plane. And this is our north, this is our south, this is our west, this is our east. So we are from x going to y. And we have been given 60 degrees. Now when you look at the quadrant, where will we locate 60 degrees? 60 degrees can be located within northeast or between north and east. So because we can locate 60 degrees here, we will not measure. Let's assume that this is our 60 degrees. That is from here to this point. And this point is Y. So from X to Y, from the question, we have been told that it is 60 degrees. When you get to Y, because Y is also another point, we are going to draw another Cartesian plane for Y. This becomes our north, our south, our west, and this becomes our east. Now we will read from the north pole to the line here, because we have to find the bearing of X, but this time it's from Y. So starting from the north pole of Y, to the given line, N C A which is this place. Now what is the angle here? It's 90. The angle here is 90. So how can I calculate the angle from this to this part? Now, when we were informed to first term, or first year, first term, we were taught angles and properties of angles, which the teacher did mention of alternate angles, which is Z angles. So when you look at this, we can see clearly that this angle and the angle here, they alternate, which is Z angles. The angle formed here and the angle formed here are equal, which means the angle here is 60 degrees. So to find the bearing using the diagram, Add 90 plus 90 plus 60. So we are going to say 90 plus 90 plus 60, giving us 240 degrees. So we conclude by saying, therefore, the bearing of X from Y is 240, which is the same. But we use this one. If it is section A, we quickly solve using this one, then we produce the answer. But if it is in section B, it will be advisable for us to use the, the diagram to solve the problem. And it will be very helpful because we are going to get scores from drawing the diagram. Let's look at example two. But always let it be at the back of your mind that any time I am dealing with the Cartesian plane or the cardinal point, the reading is always from the north and it is clockwise rotation. Always from the north, clockwise rotation. And if it is a bad bearing, note that if theta is less than 180, I'm going to find theta plus 180. But if theta is greater than 180, then it is theta minus 180. Let's look at example two. The question says, if the bearing of a point Q, so the bearing of a point Q from another point P, so this time where are we from? We are from P. So the question is saying the bearing of Q from P is 40 degrees. So find the bearing of P but this time, it is from Q. So if I want to use the formula, 
first locate the theta given? Is it less than 180 or is greater than 180? It is less. So because it is less, I will say theta plus 180 degrees. What is theta? 40 degrees plus 180 degrees. 40 plus 180 gives you 220 degrees. So you will say, therefore, the bearing of P from Q is 220 degrees. And that is how we use the formula. Because theta is less than 180, which is 40 degrees, we add 180 to it. Now, how can we also use that same problem? How can we use the diagram? Let's take the question again. If the bearing of a point P from, sorry, the bearing of a point Q from P. So where are we coming from? We are coming from P. So let me locate a point here and say P. Now where have you located a point? Draw your cardinal point or your Cartesian plane. So after drawing the point, we are going to say this is our north, our south, our west, our east. This is the point P. So we are from P. And it says that the bearing of this Q, which is from P, is 40 degrees. Where can we locate the 40 degrees on the plane? From year to year is 90. 0, 90, 180, 270, 360. So 40 degrees can be located somewhere here. Because it does not measure, you can just use the eye to detect. So let's say this is my 40 degrees. So this is my point. You can also choose to rule here because it will get into the writings up, extending it there. So now this is where my point is. And which point is that? It's Q. Because it says of Q from P. So if we are of Q from P, from the question is 40 degrees. That is from P. And this is the P at the plane. Now, if you get to Q, you also have to draw another cardinal point. This is your north. This is your north. This is your south. This is your west. This is your east. Because you are dealing with two points, you are going and you are coming. That's the back bearing. Now, he says the bearing of Q from P, so from P is 40. Now, it has asked us to calculate, find the bearing of P, but this time from where? Q. So, from the north pole of Q, clockwise rotation to this place, whatever we are going to get at the angle becomes the bearing. We know that from year to year, it's 90. Also from here, starting from here to this portion is also 90. But from year to year is 180. So if this is 90 degrees, this is 90 degrees, how can I therefore calculate for the angle here? Apply the knowledge of alternate angles, which says angles that alternate are equal. So the angle here and the angle from here are equal, which means this is also 40 degrees. So add 90 degrees, which is this one, plus 90 degrees, which is this one, then plus the 40 degrees. Noticing that we are going to get 220 degrees, which is the same as this, using the formula. And it gives us, it gave us 220 degrees. So any time we have to find the back bearing or the bearing of the point, we have to know that we will start from the north pole clockwise rotation to the given point. And when you start from wherever you have to go, create another Cartesian plane from the north pole, you count to the last part.
Now let's look at the last question and the bearing for today. Now let's read the question. It says, the bearing of A from B, which means we are coming from B. So the bearing of A from B is 245 degrees. Calculate the bearing of B, this time, from A. So first look at the theta that has been given in the question. And ask yourself, is the theta more than 180 or is less than 180? Now you can see clearly that this theta is more than 180. So what are we going to use? We are going to use the second one, which says theta minus 180 degrees because theta given in the question or the angle given in the question is more than 180 subtract 180 from it and what is the theta 245 degrees minus 180 degrees then you ask yourself using the vertical way 245 Minus 180. 5 minus 0 gives you 5. 4 minus 8 not possible. You borrow this becomes 14. Now 14. If you take away 8, what do you have left? You are left with 6. So it means 245 minus 180 gives you 605 degrees. Now when you look 65 degrees, sorry. Now when you look at this. This is a two number, or sorry, two numbers, sorry. They are two numbers. And still, since we are dealing with bearing, we have to get three figures. So you just bring zero in front of the 365 degrees, giving you three figures. So we say, therefore, the bearing of B from A, therefore, the bearing of B, from A is 0, 0,65 degrees. And that is how we calculate for if we are using the formula. But what will you do if in case it is section B and you have to use the diagram? Just look at the theta and understand where you are coming from. Where are we coming from? We are coming from B. So let's create a cardinal point. Let's make a B here. So let's say the B should be here. And you draw your cardinal point. We let you draw the cardinal point. You know that we have north, we have south, we have west, we have east. Now look at the angle given, 245. How can we get 245? We know that from year to year is 90. From year to year is 90. Year to year is 90. So from the North Pole to the South Pole here is 180 degrees, which means we are left with 65 to get 245. So if I'm to assume I am going to get my 65 here, somewhere here, then I'll end here. So since I am from B of A, when I get to A, this becomes my A point, I will draw another Cartesian plane or another cardinal point there. But this time, this is my north, this is my south, this is my west, this is my east. We know that from year to year is 90 degrees. From year to year is 90. Year is 65. Because if you add everything here, you have to get four, 245 degrees. So from the question, the bearing of A from B, so from, from B to the A is 245, which is this one. Now the question is asking you to calculate the bearing of B, but this time is from A on the North Pole to this portion. So how can I calculate this one? I know that the angle here is 65 degrees because I sold for it. The, this plus this is 180. So what plus 180 will give me this angle? It's 45 degrees, 65 degrees, sorry. So that's 65 degrees, I'm going to construct it 
are the third quadrants of the cardinal point. This is the first, this is the second, this is the third. So this is 65. Using alternate angles. What we were told when we were looking at angles, alternate angles. The angle here alternates with the angle here, which is Z angle. So the angle here is also 65 degrees. So reading from the north pole to this gives me 65 degrees. So I will say, therefore, the bearing of B, but from A, is, because this is 65, I'll just bring zero in front, and it will give me a three-figure bearing. And this is how we calculate or solve for the bearing of any given point, either a point or two points. Thank you for staying tuned. I hope what we are doing, you are benefiting from it. Please don't forget to hit the subscription button. Because if we are able to do this, you will be able to answer our questions. Or if you are able to understand, you will be able to answer questions in exams. Please do send your comments for me to also know whether we are making progress or we are not. Because you are the reason why we are doing this. God bless you for saying to you. Today we talk about bearing and we we'll look at how to do it. Thank you very much. See you next time as we look at vectors.